And so this force can't be resisted if we try to keep prevent this from turning. Um, it uh, uh, is simply going to back up that force. And as we put more current in those coils, something has to give. Either this will turn or those coils will burn up. Mm -hmm. And typically in an AC motor, um, you would wind for a fairly high voltage. Right. Yeah, high voltage, yeah. Voltage Low. has nothing to do yep. with magnetic lines of flux. It's only an indirect re relationship. It's an indirect relationship to current. Current causes the magnetic field. Period. Power, your power of your motor in horsepower, for example, is a function of the current and the voltage, the pressure. Mm -hmm. So if you have about um, that. 100 volts and 100 amps, that's 10 kilowatts. Right. If you take the 10 kilowatts and multiply it by your motor's efficiency, let's say this is an 88% efficient motor. Did they give us anything on our one page of documentation that we've ever received on this motor? I don't see one. Yeah, they don't even list one. Say it's 88%, that's 8,800 watts. There are 746.6, mm -hmm. I believe, or 0.5 or 0.6, uh, actually, between the two of them, I think, um, watts in a horsepower. And that's how you would calculate an instantaneous horsepower in this motor mm -hmm. um, bought based on voltage and current. Um, the voltage is not the thing. We can use finer wire for the same power and get more windings if we go to a higher voltage. In this particular case, we're using 375 volts, so 300 amps is a lot of power. A lot. No. And um, this is a 30 kilowatt rated motor, and I find that astounding. Uh, because of the diameter of the rotor. Our actual torque is, of course, a function of this interaction between the rotor coils and the stator coils, uh, but it's also a function of the leverage from the coil to the center mm -hmm. of the shaft. And this is a, a very small diameter shaft. It is. It, if anything, it's smaller than the net gains. Um, mm -hmm. And so I suspect a little... Uh, sword play with the spec on this motor. Um, we were actually yesterday going to replace the motor. Um, and yeah, we talked about it for a while. We took a look at our little uh, high performance golf mm -hmm. car motor. Now this is the difference in support. Uh, we bought one motor from that guy. The motor and controller right. together were $4,600, a third. Yep. A third, a third of, of this, yeah of this thing. Comes with a little Curtis 1238 that'll do about 60 kilowatts total. Um, we're looking at 120 kilowatts with the um, um, Tim 600, again, based on their spec sheet. But I'm looking at that motor, and it's as big as this one. Remember, this has got a, a water it's got jacket, the water jacket in, in there, in there too, yeah. Um, to do liquid cooling. And so I'm thinking, you know, that, that motor is not too much different size. Now, remember I said that we could use smaller wire um, if we used higher voltage. Well, the reverse is true. Mm -hmm. If you use lower voltage for the same yes. windings, um, you have to use higher gauge wire because you're doing higher currents. That motor is wired for wound for 108 volts. 108 volts, yeah. And, uh, and 550 amps is what the Curtis will put out. I don't know how much current that no. motor will take. No, we really don't. We have a couple of ratings on it, but these guys are kind of making them out in California. I'm not sure they know at what point they burst into flames. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at that motor and I'm thinking, you know, we could probably drive that with the Tim's 600 mm -hmm. thing. Brian, let's call the guy. What's his name? Uh, I talked to Bill, Bill out there. Yeah. And these guys have been great every time we've talked to them. 
He pulls out his phone right here in the shop, dials him. The guy answers the phone. And our question, of course, is about the encoder. We've got a two-channel um, encoder here that's 64 bits. I think I can set some of that in the software, but what, what are we dealing with? Bill says, well, ours is a two-channel 64-bit. Two-channel 64-bit. I'll send you the pinout. And we're like, you know, this motor, it's wired for 108 volts. We've got a controller that does 375 volts and 300 amps. Now, the net gain, we get a rating chart for mm -hmm. that. That's 72 volts. Mm -hmm. um, that's what right. their charts what are at. Right. Uh, mostly, people run it at 144. We've been doing 120. Yep. Um, the max on the net gain is 192 volts. Now, that's a series DC motor, but the limitation of 192 volts um, by net gain's mm -hmm. recommendation, and people have run it higher, um, is because of arcing on the commutator. On the, okay, yeah. Cool thing about Makes AC sense. induction motors. No commutator, no slip rings, no mm. brushes. This is a solid piece. The two bearings can wear out. This can't wear out. This can't really wear out. It's just a big chunk of metal with windings in it. All you can do is burn it burn out. Burn it up, yep. And that's based on the cross section of the wire, just like you can put more current through a, um, a 12 gauge wire than you can a 22 gauge mm -hmm. wire, and certainly more through a two watt cable than a 12 gauge wire. The same applies to motors and insulation. Mm. So I'm thinking that's got to be a monster motor. Most most uh, AC motors are oh from 200 to 460 volts um, and and much lower currents. This one as shipped to us is hey here's your 550 amp limit yep. about 130 volt volt limit. So we know from some of the other motors we've dealt with that we can go at higher voltages. And I would say that that's sort of the rule. You can go up in voltage. You probably shouldn't go down in voltage and increase the current because you'll outlive the ability mm -hmm. of the conductor to carry that much current. So our question to him uh, in California was, um, could we run 375 volts and 300 amps instead of 550? through that motor, it looks to me like this would work. His response? Uh, he told us that they weren't sure, they just hadn't done it, that they were gonna talk about it and that we could always have them do a uh, custom winding. Actually, what he told us was all the AC50s, they oh, hand wind them anyway. They hand wind them anyway, yeah. He says, I'll wind you one for whatever voltage yeah. you want. When do you want it there? Mm -hmm. That's product support. Guys, nice. and I, uh, the more I deal with this high performance golf cars, the better I like these people in these motors. I believe we could drop that motor in in place of this. Uh, we'd have mm. to redo the adapter, and we may just do that as a second motor and see how they compare. Just, mm -hmm. In any yeah. event, that's how the AC induction motor works, and I favor it for a couple of reasons. If you drive the rotor and you remain connected to the stator windings, um, current starts coming out of them. It, it isn't that AC motors are capable of regenerative braking. They're almost not capable of regenerative braking. You have to disconnect from it um, right. to get it to quit. Yeah. And there's no brushes uh, to replace, no commutators to arc. Um, and really the, the voltage and current parameters are a function of the winding size. Um, the motor itself could be rebuilt uh, forever by replacing these two bearings and rewinding those uh, stator um, mm, coils right. over and over, but some instances of AC induction motors have run continuously for 100 years. Um, this is mostly That's with amazing. bearings that mm -hmm. sit in oil cups that you oil every day in yeah. an industrial right. setting. Some of those have run 100 years continuously. 
It's amazing. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. incredible. Um, Nicholas Tesla uh, was a genius. Um, he invented this uh, concept, and, and he makes a real good electric car now. Uh, <laughs> so while we're, we're dealing with this, I thought I'd show you a little bit and tell you what I know about um, AC induction motors and how they work, let you look inside one a little bit. Again, I like that this is water-cooled. The case and stator windings look pretty heavy. Um, this is a little, I don't know, $233 for the bearing. 